Well, it's been a summer of considerable discontent with a new party splintering from the Conservatives, allegations that Canada is too diverse, and an epidemic of gun violence, which has triggered calls for a handgun ban. Our CTV pollster has been in the field, taking the pulse of the nation's opinion on these hot topics, and Nick Nanos of Nanos Research is back and joins me in the studio. Hey, Don. Nice to have you back. Good to be here. You know, when you left last in June, we last chatted in June, there's no way you could have imagined that Maxime Bernier would do the walk out of the party, and he'll, he's, this all started when he said, Canada's too racially diverse, basically, and that uh, he was making a complaint. And so I asked you, remember I met you in the summer, and I said, let's, let's do a poll on this. So you did a poll for Power Play. Opinions on racial diversity. What did you find out about how Canadians feel about that topic? Well, you know, the, the poll that we did for Power Play on uh, whether there was too much, the right amount, or not enough racial diversity, kind of like the Goldilocks yeah. kind of uh, <laughs> large, scale, just off, just right, uh, yeah. suggested that 26% or one out of every four Canadians believe that there's too much racial diversity, 12% not enough. Uh, the rest said there's either the right amount or we're unsure. So you have to think of what Maxime Bernier said when he kind of stirred the pot, so to speak, in the Conservative Party, and I would say among elites, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of his comments on diversity and a his comments basically resonate with about one out of every four Canadians hmm. in terms of there being too much racial diversity. And maybe it's not a majority, maybe it's not a lot, but still, one out of every four Canadians is a significant number, probably the number that he might want to build a party on right. in terms of uh, his vision for Canada. Yeah, did you see much break or uh, change in geography like was it higher or lower in different parts of the country yeah well you know the thing is, is that was a little higher in the prairie provinces mm -hmm. which is the conservative core uh, too and much racial diversity is that what they were saying yeah. exactly so uh, so you have to see this as kind of uh, a signal so to speak uh, that he has to certain types of voters but you know my sense is that you know this is not just conservatives that he's trying to appeal to that there are people who vote for other parties also that might agree with that and probably you know his view of the world in Canada is that Canada is created by two founding nations French and English mm -hmm. he kinda likes that and uh, the diversity stuff not as much of a priority for so, him. So, you know, a lot of concern I was at the convention in Halifax uh, a couple weeks ago. And certainly the, the concern was that this new Conservative Party, whatever it is, would siphon away enough support from the existing Conservative Party to cause them grief in the next election. You tested this uh, in, the, in the public opinion realm. What did you find out about the support for this new party? Well, in, in, these, in the question that we asked for the Globe, we asked whether Canadians were open or not open to a new Conservative Party led by Maxime Bernier and about 17% or a little less than one out of every six said that they were open. So, could he win an election? Nope. Could he come second? Nope. Could he come third? Maybe. Yeah, but, that's you know, higher than the NDP. Well, right? yeah, you know, or the thing is, is we it. have the NDP in the teens also. Uh, and you have to think there are another 12% of Canadians on top of the 17% who are unsure whether they would vote for a new Conservative Party led by Maxime Bernier, which means that they might be open. But what this does speak to is how he can upset the apple cart, I would say, not just for the Conservatives, but for the Liberals and the other parties, because in these races that might have two and three-way splits, if he siphons off 5% of the vote, uh, it could change the dynamic of local races. But it all comes down to, What's the name of the party? What does it stand for? How does he perform and does he tap into that anxiety and anger in terms of whether he'll have a real or perceived impact on the political landscape? Speaking of anxiety and anger, there seems to be a, a lot of sudden violence with involving guns in Toronto and I know the mayor is calling for a handgun ban. I'm not sure what that would do in terms of a municipal ban. It probably needs national, but you, you, you sort of went out and into the field and said, who supports what for a total ban on ownership? What did you find out? Well, you know, in the survey that we've just released for CTV News on uh, whether people were opposed or supporting of a total ban on handguns, about two out of every three Canadians support or somewhat support a total ban. And, you know, the thing is, this is a big city issue. Every time there's some sort of crime that includes a handgun, this is going to kind of get on the political agenda. So it shouldn't be surprising that big city mayors like John Tory have called for an outright ban. But, you know, this isn't necessarily a slam dunk. You have to re realize that about three out of every ten Canadians oppose or somewhat oppose. And when you get into the prairie provinces and outside of the big cities, mm -hmm. there's even greater opposition uh, for a total ban on handguns. So uh, think of this as something that's on the radar and very susceptible 
to tragic events being in the news right. and mobilizing voters. Very interesting. Okay, a hot start to our year with Nick Nanos. Yep. Uh, who knows which way it's going to go, but thanks for your insight on these topics just to get us going. Thank you, Don. All right.